because then from what I've read, I'm no doctor, what doctors have told me, once you start taking you know, the insulin, once you start getting into this, that's what really gets you. Dr. Blaylock? Yeah, I've written several newsletters on how to control type 2 diabetes very easily. Uh, and there's a number of things like curcumin, quercetin, uh, that uh, control the blood sugar, cinnamon extract, alpha lipoic acid. Uh, they all can correct this, change your diet, eat a lot of vegetables, avoid the sugar and the high fructose corn syrup. And almost everybody can cure themselves of type 2 diabetes doing that. Did you hear that? But you're going to have to change your ways, my friend. They're doing this to us on purpose, especially the high fructose corn syrup breaks down from the medical science into systems that absolutely fry your body. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I, I, I had enough depleted uranium. I got the, I got the whole point on it. Uh, oh, so you got a little DU, a little DU. A little DU oh, yeah. But, yeah, sucked it all up. But uh, yeah, I was just hoping there was someone in Austin. You, because I'm, I'm in South Austin. If you knew somebody, I just go and talk to. Well, here's the deal. I can't get into telling people medically what to do. Are you kidding? I mean, I know a lot of this knowledge from interviewing doctors like Dr. Blaylock, but he he couldn't even tell you something unless he saw your chart and talked to you and spent time with you. And even then, it would take. I mean, look, it, it's. I feel sorry. Yeah, people say support the troops all day. The DU is a death sentence. Uh, I mean, it'll, it'll reduce, you know, 20, 30% of your life. And I mean, it, that's what I mean. Uh, this is this is devastating. This is crazy. I mean, the people doing this may think they've got a method of their madness, but at the end of the day, they're just a bunch of crazy people. Dr. Blaylock, final comments. Yeah, I think we're, we're all going to have to start waking up. People need to understand you're being lied to in, in, in a gross way. Uh, you know, I, I work with all of these people on these vaccine sites that, that are called constantly quacks and fringe people. These are some of the most intelligent people I've met. Uh, they're research scientists, they're top level people, and they don't want you to look at these sites and they don't want you to look at their information. It's all published uh, in top level journals. Uh, uh, these are top researchers uh, with incredible credentials and crackpots like Paul Offit are trying to convince you uh, that uh, these people are a danger to your health, and it's a lie. And that's why you need to read this Managed Truth. It tells you how uh, we're, our, our, uh, our truth is managed by uh, people uh, high up in the What's NFT. the best site for that? Is it RussellBlaylockMD.com or the yeah. BlaylockWellnessCenter.com? Uh, go to RussellBlaylockMD.com. It has all my published all uh, right. papers and things I've written. Well, Doctor, I know you're a very busy man, and we always appreciate you honoring us with your time and trying to warn people. I know it's not pearls before swine. Uh, people are listening to you, and a lot of people are seeing dramatic results, and uh, that's the proof is in the pudding. So God bless you. God bless you, Alex, and thank you for all you do. Thank you, sir. All right, there goes uh, Dr. Blaylock. We're going to come back in a few minutes and uh, talk about Obama and where this guy comes from. And I know he's a puppet, but he's a nasty puppet. And he, he's totally blackmailed. He's not who they say he is. And that's why they can have the president tell Congress, I take orders from the UN, sit down and shut up. I mean, this country is in deep trouble. It's all I can do to not selfishly grab my wife and children and get out of here. In fact, that's why I, I subconsciously feel really guilty and angry, even though I'm doing it for moral reasons. I still get mad at myself Every day I look at my children that I'm not getting out of this country. Okay? I mean, I, 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 I could punch myself in the face because I'm, I'm, I'm conflicted. I know I'm doing the right thing, but I still, my flesh gets really angry and says, buddy, you know, you are asking for it, coming on air and calling the attorney general a murdering terrorist and giving evidence. But my soul says you to my flesh, you're doing it, pal. You're doing it. And because that's the only way I can live is I've got to tell the truth and I can't back off and I got to go where this leads me. And if more people would just say, I don't care what my neighbors think, I don't care what's going on, I'm going to get aggressive about this. Because a caller earlier is like, they're doing this to our children. This guy's talking about his nephews and getting mad. Yeah, you bet. Exactly. You haven't lost your human instinct, your basic humanity. You understand this is, this is bad. People ask why I blow up, why I yell and scream. Because I get frustrated. All I do is pour over their crimes all day. I know I'm right. And I know they're killing our troops with the DU. I know they're killing our kids with all these shots. I know it. I know. And I want it to stop. I'm saying to the public, why does it have to get much worse before you get up and get angry?
And you're not going to save the world by yourself, but taking action will. I got some breaking news on the other side on French terror attack, all the hallmarks of an intelligent psyop false flag, curtainmoinfowars.com. We're on the march. The empire's on the run. Well, Little Rock renames airport to honor Bill and Hillary Clinton. Isn't that just special? Why don't they name the MENA Airport uh, the cocaine importation agency uh, of Bill and Hillary Clinton? I mean, I've had the CIA guys on like Terry Reid. Uh, I've had them all on who witnessed it. Uh, local police documented it, all the murders. So isn't that cute? Uh, they're uh, naming Reuters reports to the uh, airport in Little Rock after these two pieces of trash. There's just no end to these criminals. And I love Bill Clinton's big charity that steals most of the money for Africa and stuff. Bono, you know, gets like 1.3% or something of the money to the Africans. I mean, they're just, they're just sick. And it's time to call these jellyfish out for what they are. Now, we're going to Dr. Jerome Corsi with some big breaking news uh, here in just a moment. Uh, first off, this is a story that is compiled from the BBC, London Telegraph, uh, French TV, it's the same MO. This Al-Qaeda person was hooked up uh, in Afghanistan, reportedly in a prison. French intelligence for two years knew everything he was doing, and then he was able to carry all this out. Now, they go out and they find crazy people, and then they basically let them attack, kind of like the underwear bomber on Christmas Day. That's confirmed. U.S. government got him on the aircraft, and he was whacked out of his mind. The point is, is that they did it. Kind of like the first World Trade Center attack where they cooked the bomb, trained the driver, the FBI did. Well, this uh, Muhammad character, the suspect in the killing of seven people, including a Jewish school in Toulouse, uh, Toulouse, France, fits the pattern of an Al-Qaeda intelligence asset. And it goes on. According to BBC, he was a uh, raider of French authorities on their radar because of visits he made to Afghanistan and the militant stronghold. In Pakistan, and it goes on to break down the fact that they're having Sarkozy's election, and this guy had reportedly been in a prison, and then had been uh, basically released or escaped. Uh, this whole thing stinks to high heaven. Kurt Nemo's article breaks it down. French terror attack, all the hallmarks of an intelligence psyop and false flag. It's all boiled down at Infowars.com. Now, shifting gears uh, over to Dr. Jerome Corsi who doesn't really need any introduction here. He writes for World Net Daily. He's had a bunch of New York Times bestsellers, including number one uh, bestsellers. And he's a, a PhD from Harvard University in political science. So he's an expert on the economy as well. I want to spend a few minutes with him on that. But he has been hot on the trail uh, of Barry Sotero and the other aliases of Obama. And now he has done an interview with The Postman, who for years delivered the mail to the heirs uh, family, uh, who said that they were putting a, quote, foreign student Obama through school. And we've got all these other people saying at Occidental and other places, he was introduced as Barry. We were conspiracy theorists three years ago. Now they admit, oh, he is Barry Sotero. Obama calls into talk shows now and calls himself Barry. So first it didn't exist, and then, oh, actually, that, that was my name. But let's not discuss it. So all of that's going on. This is a big development, and Paul Watson has an article on it. Obama chides birthers while media spikes Ayers' bombshell. Postman says Ayers' parents put foreign student Obama through school. That's the InfoWars article with the latest developments. Obviously, at World Net Daily, they've got uh, all of the facts there in the interview uh, with the uh, gentleman. Uh, but this is just something you add to the pile. Uh, Dr. Corsi, thanks for coming on to tell us what's happening. Hi, uh, Alex. Always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Uh, so, wow. Tell us about the new development. Well, this postman, whose name is uh, Alan Hulton, H-U-L-T-O-N, he he lives up in uh, Illinois, outside of Chicago. He delivered mail for 39 years, and his route included Glen Ellen, suburb of Chicago, where Mary and Tom Ayers, the parents of Weather Underground bomber Bill Ayers, lived. And the course of delivering mail, this occurred in the late 80s, early 90s. I think it really occurred probably in the summer of 1989 as I pieced together the events. Uh, Alan Halton had been told earlier by Mary 
Ayers that the family, Bill, she and his, her, her husband, Tom Ayers, were supporting this foreign student, helping him get through his schooling. And she was bragging about how, how great this was, this foreign student, black foreign student. And then around the summer of 89, Ayers, is, uh, Ayers uh, the postman just delivered the mail to the Ayers' home. He's walking in the, in the driveway, coming out onto the sidewalk, and sees this black young kid approaching him. And the kid comes up to him and says he is going to the Ayers' home to thank them for helping him with his education. And immediately the postman connects the two together and says, oh, this is the foreign student. And he remembers what he looks like. So now we fast forward. Obama's running for president. The postman hears his voice on the television, looks, and says, this is the guy I met in front of the Ayers home. This is the foreign student that Mary and Tom Ayers were paying for to go to school. And he did have this route. Uh, The guy's a credible witness, but people are saying, how does he remember this? Well, you can say what you want about Obama or Barry Sotero. He is a striking personality, his voice, the way he looks. I mean, he is somebody who is unusual. Yeah, and see, Alex, I taped the postman, Alex Halton, for four, almost four hours, like three and some hours and a half. I was with him almost the entire day. I made him go through the story three different times. Also, the, this was a lead that was developed by Sheriff Arpaio. There was an affidavit. I was working from an affidavit that Halton, the postman, had given to Sheriff Arpaio. And I was out there validating the lead, making sure we videotaped the postman to get his story in his own words. And I can tell you, he was, this is a guy who had every appearance of telling the truth. And he said he remembered Obama because the big ears, uh, the light complexion, the way he was dressed. He described his clothes, you know, polo shirt, a dress shirt with an open collar, no tie, nice slacks. And that's exactly when you see Obama in the Harvard pictures, for instance, the Breitbart just released. That's exactly how Obama was dressed. And, And the physical descriptions of Obama, meeting him even once sets an impact on your mind because he does look so distinctive. So I'm convinced that this is an accurate recollection. And the postman had told the story to a liberal blogger, an attorney, in 2009, and it was reported but paid very little attention to. But when we got the story through the Sheriff Arpaio's investigation and it connected the dots, foreign student knew the Ayers family Earlier than said, this is you know, before Obama was in, in fact, we've demonstrated before Obama was in Harvard, he was working in 1988 with the Ayers family in a Chicago school project. Now, 1989, Mary Ayers is bragging about funding this foreign black student. Obama fits the bill. He walks up the uh, driveway and says, I'm the student here to thank the Ayers family. We put it all together. We've got the weather ground, underground bombers, family paying very likely for Obama's Harvard education as a foreign student. And Obama's telling the postman, another reason I think the postman remembered it, Obama's saying in 1989, 